Good morning, Grace Valley. Good to see you all. Uh, and I hope you have been a great week. Uh, let us worship together. I'm going to read today's passage, uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 8 to 15. If you can pause your video and then open your book. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from the members of the synagogues of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous word against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced the false witnesses who testified this fellow never stops speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed it down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of angel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your, uh, this grace and uh, love. We get together here to worship you, Lord. Uh, open our heart to receive your blessing and your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. A terrible incident happened. The incident was so terrible and tragic, it was enough to shake the foundation of the early church. When we hear shocking news or experience an unfortunate incident, we think, how could this happen? The early Christian must have thought the same. No one accepted, expect, expected Stephen to be murder, murdered. Uh, but one thing is clear, it was not a mere incident. Some says that Stephen's strong faith combined with an excessive passion brought such a result. However, the Bible firmly rejects this claim. The Bible records that Stephen was a man full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. He had a balanced faith. He was passionate for the gospel, but he was also wise, and he did not act recklessly or impulsively. Some said that Stephen was uh, unfortunately unlucky. Even before the Stephen's incident, the apostle had faced dangerous situations, but they were able to escape each time. What uh, when they were put in the prison for preaching the gospel at the temple court, with the help of the angel of God, they escaped from the prison and uh, went back to the preaching the gospel at the temple court. Even when the Sanhedrin wanted to kill the apostles, the famous teacher, uh, teacher of the law, Gamaliel, intervened and pre prevented the apostle uh, from being killed. All of this, all of this was the work of the Holy Spirit. So, how could Stephen just be unlucky? Was it because the Holy Spirit didn't protect him? The Bible clearly rejects such a claim. As we can see in chapter 6 and chapter 7, the Holy Spirit never, never left Stephen. And he was stoned to death while being full of the Holy Spirit. 
then how can we explain Stephen's death while being full of the Holy Spirit? Stephen's martyrdom was led by the Holy Spirit from beginning to end, planned by and conducted by the Holy Spirit. That's why Stephen's death is not a mere accident or an unfortunately unlucky event. This is the result of a life filled with uh, faith some, uh, for some of the most spirit-filled people in the history of the church. Stephen was not stoned to death accidentally. He was uh, martyred because he, his faith was already leading him to the martyr, martyr's way. When I went to a mission trip, a farming uh, village in Indonesia with some high school students. One of the students had a stomach ache and, and asked me, if I die here now, is it martyrdom? Do you know what I said? Answered, say no. You just picked out too much and are dying from a stomach ache. Some people misuse and abuse uh, martyrdom too much. It, it is often called martyrdom when you die while doing some religious activity. I, I have even heard of the gifts of martyrdom is the list of spiritual gifts. That is not correct. Martyrdom is more fundamental than that. Martyrdom is not an accident or phenomenon, but rather a form, form of faith. It is a way for believers to walk. So to, you do not become a martyr when you die while doing some religious activity. You can walk the way of martyrdom and have the face of martyrdom even before you die. I would like to say, I would like to say it is the life of martyrdoms, martyr, uh, martyrs, or the way of martyrs. The life of faith looks about the same, but there are actually three stages to it. Although we attend the same church, and worship together, there are people walking, walking on three different stages of faith among us. First stage is the seekers stage. Seekers are people who come to church and seeking answers to questions they have in their life. They, they might be the skeptical about their lives and because they have experienced problems or they have been longing for a better life, perhaps a more purposeful or fulfilling life. In this stage, people may call themselves Christians. They come, they come to church and follow the way of the faith, but they still have not had an encounter with God. They don't have personal relationships with God. They, they are seeking uh, and then some, some, um, some are even testing to see if Christianity will work for them or provide the answer to their questions. Strictly, strictly speaking, people at this stage are still non-believers. Nonetheless, seeking uh, the truth in God. To them, the Bible may be a book for good morality. In order to have a genuine faith, you must pay a price. To walk the way of seekers, you must give up some of the fun in, in life. Give up what you, you are used to, used to. And uh, take on uh, the fear or discomfort uh, of moving on to something new. 
And you often have a conflict and a hesitation about whether you should go to church to worship God or relax and have some fun. Whether you should go to church even if you still feel awkward and uncomfortable. Whether you should continue to worship or pray even if it is not fun. Whether uh, you should keep uh, going to church even if you have problems with uh, some church members. However, there are also benefits for paying the price. What you, what you may experience at this stage is joy from the new understanding or enlightenment and, and hope and the expectation of change for the better. In this stage, there is a, uh, practically no power of faith. If people experience the hardship and temptation from the world or frustration or conflict in, in relationships, they easily go back to their previous way of life, giving up the way of seekers, this is a very unstable stage. After the seeker's stage, the next is the disciple's stage. People in the disciple's stage follow Jesus Christ as his disciple and trying to obey his commands and will. They have had an encounter with God and have received the Holy Spirit and have a conviction that living as a disciple of Christ is the way of life. To walk the way of the disciple, you must pay the price, the price of giving up your will. You must deny yourself and give up your own will and your own thoughts as obe obedience to Christ as uh, is, is most important. You are willing to change your lifestyle. You will have a set of view, uh, uh, values and principles about life and the, the world, different from the, the, the time you were a seeker. Your obedience to Christ will also impact your character and habits. The biggest joy and satisfaction at, at this stage is seeing your inner being changed. Even if you face hardship and trials, you, uh, you are not shaken easily and can endure with the power of the faith. Of course, at times, you may stumble and fail. But soon you will get back and stand up on, on the foundation of faith in relying on the word of God. At this stage, you give your money, time, talents to God and his ministry following the Lord. You, you also actively participate in the ministry, serving, teaching, helping others and going for missions and evangelizing for kingdom of God, you know, expanding the kingdom. In Acts, believers were Christ's disciples. That's why they were later called Christians. The people who follow Jesus Christ, the, the disciple stays is the beginning of the earnest of faith. So, we often say the way of faith is the way of disciples. What is it said? What is unfortunate is that too many people in church nowadays stay as seekers and don't move forward to become Christ's disciple. They are, they are constantly seeking and accepting some of the God's words, but, but they refuse to be changed. They still keep their own frame of the mind and their own thoughts and their own opinions and views. 
Yet what is the most important to them is self, keeping their self pride and expressing, expressing self feelings rather than God. You need to know that when you are not advancing to the next stage, you are not maintaining your current stage. But going backward, faith is either advancing forward or it is going backward. There is no standing still. When we are not moving forward to the next stage, God sometimes shakes up our life and it turns them upside down. If God doesn't do that, our faith backslides even more. Thank God, God does for us. Seekers must have a forward and enter the stage of disciples. When you stop being a seeker, the way of the seekers itself is meaningless. On the other hand, once you enter the stage of disciple, you may think it is good enough. Most of them think about disciple of Jesus is good enough. But there is one more stage. That is the stage of martyrs. Acts chapter 1 through chapter 6 describe how the church started and what the disciples of Jesus Christ were like. The disciples uh, were the people who, uh, who were in the, in the world but did not belong to this world. They had totally different views, values, principles, and the ways of living. But then, but then, at the end of chapter 6, the Bible describes the death of a disciple named Stephen. Stephen. As I said before, his death was not an unfortunate accident. It was Another way of faith that was uh, surpassing the stage, uh, stage or the way of the disciples, or it could be called the highest stage or the highest way of disciples. Let's note, let's note, note that the name of the first Christian martyr is Stephen. The Greek name Stephanos means crown or wreath. Stephen was indeed like a crown among the disciples. The faith he had and then the way he walked uh, was worthy of wearing the crown of life from Christ. According to the James chapter 1, 12 and the Revelations chapter 2, 10, the crown of life is bestowed upon those who persevered on the trials. Jesus references this crown when he tells the church in Smyrna to not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Be careful, uh, be faithful even to the point of death. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you the crown of life, the crown of life. Those who walk the way of martyrs love the Lord more than their life. They are, they are even willing to give up their lives to follow the Lord. They, they are the people this, this world cannot stop and win over. The Bible says that this world is not worthy of them. In fact, when our Lord Jesus mentioned about his disciples in, in the synoptics, gospels, he was uh, describing the way of martyrs all the time. Let me give you an example. Matthew chapter 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body. That's a martyr. But cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy 
both soul and body in hell. He's talking about murder. Luke chapter 14, 26, if anyone comes to me, does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. It's talk about, uh, you know, mother. Mark chapter 8, 40, uh, 34, it says, when he called the crowd to him along, along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. What cross for? Cross for crucifixion, crucifixion for death. David Watson, who wrote the famous book titled Discipleship, quoted, when Christ called a man, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Amazing, isn't it? He bids him come and die. By Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor and theologian who was known for his staunch resistance to Nazi dictator dictatorship in Hitler. This quote tells us the direction of the discipleship. Just as the, the way of seekers are only uh, meaningful as they are heading to the way of disciples, and the way of the disciples should be headed to the way of the martyrs. Thus, the way of the martyrs must be the ultimate direction and the destination of all disciples. You may ask why we must believe in Jesus so solemnly. But faith is a solemn from the beginning. As we live in faith, faith, many of many of our struggles and conflicts arise because we didn't die. Because we kept our own ego, pride greed, and selfishness. If we have only heard of the power of faith but never experienced it, it might be because we are not determined to walk the way of the martyrs, giving up the, our own life. Dear Grace Valley Church members and dear friends, brothers, sisters, Walking, walking the way of martyrs is the way of experiencing the power of the faith. Let me tell you one more thing. Walking the way of the martyrs is the way of the experience, the power of the faith. If you want the power of faith, you have to walk in the way of the martyrs. The way of the seekers and the way of the disciples are both on the way of the martyrs, actually. Our faith ultimately is headed to the martyrdom. Look at the lives of Jesus, the 12 disciples, except Judas Iscariot, he, the failed disciple. The conclusion of most, more, all, more than, more, all of them, disciples' lives was the martyrdom. Even John is lived for like a long, but his life whole, that whole life is martyr, martyrdom. The people of faith described in Revelation are all martyrs. Read the Revelation, you're going to find out. The way of the martyr is a conclusion of the all Christians. That's all Christians. There is no exception. There is the answer to, the, uh, to our questions. There is the joy of our life, and there is the power of our faith. The way of faith, faith is the most beautiful and, and powerful way in this world. But only the ones who walk, who walk the way of martyrs can experience the beauty and the power. Stephen was uh, described a man full of God's grace and power. Such life, 
full of God's grace and power is only possible when we walk the way of martyrs. The way of martyrs is a solemn, but it's the beauty of our faith. I will talk about how beautiful it is next week. Let us pray. Dear Grace Valley Church, and dear friends, the way of martyrs uh, seems like a too heavy for us, but I already told you, our faith is heavy today. So, in this time, we earnestly, earnestly uh, go to the Father and ask, Dear Heavenly Father, full of grace and love, your Son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, walked the way of martyrdom, the way of the seekers, and the way of the disciples are on the way to the my way of martyrs. We are lacking in many ways, Lord, but help us continue to advance our walk so that we may walk the way of martyrs. Give us faith and grace to walk the glorious way, the way to the crown of the life, Jesus Christ, you went. We want to follow you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read the question for meditation. First, how did Stephen's martyrdom start? Who started it and finished it? Why? Second, what is the difference between the way of the seekers and the way of the disciples? How is the way of the martyrs different from the seekers and the disciples? Third, what is the ultimate direction and goal of our faith? Why is the believing and following Jesus the same as living the life of a martyrdom? Think about this week and to share with your fellow uh, Christians and your family. And I hope you have a great week and see you next week. I'm going to uh, bless you. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this word of God and encouragement. Lord, uh, we want to follow you. We want to follow you the, until the very end of our life, end of day. Lord, strengthen us and give us power and faith. Whoever wants to follow the way of martyrs, may the grace of Jesus Christ and love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. All right. Have a good uh, afternoon <laughs> and see you next week. Bye. Love you.